Now it is my privilege to officially welcome to our 39th annual commencement exercises our very special guests, the class of 2012. Will all of our graduates please stand? You have sacrificed and labored for years to make this day a reality, and we are proud of you. Congratulations. You may be seated. You don't get your degree yet. You've got to wait a little while. There are over 14,000 members of this graduating class, and over 6,000 are participating in this morning's ceremony. This is the largest graduating class in the history of Liberty University. Nearly 6,300 of our graduates will be awarded master's degrees in today's ceremony. 147 will be awarded doctoral degrees. Our oldest graduate today is Dolores Darrell at age 77. And our young... Our, our youngest graduate is Gabrielle Turnquest. She's 17. <laughs> Congratulations to both of you. The 2012 graduating class includes representatives from all 50 states and more than 70 foreign countries, including over 2,000 members of our nation's armed forces. Liberty is proud to be one of our nation's most military-friendly universities. We have over 22,800 active duty service members now enrolled as students. Please show them our appreciation. Thank you to our military students for all you have sacrificed for your country. The schools of business, education, arts and sciences, and the seminary have the greatest number of graduates today. There are 875 graduates who have completed their studies with a perfect 4.0 GPA. This, today is their first day outside the library in four years. I would like to give special recognition to those graduating from Liberty University today who have completed their studies online. As part of Liberty's Christian mission, we have sought to make Christian education affordable and accessible to as many individuals as possible. Liberty University online has achieved that objective like nothing else could. I have received dozens of messages just this week from graduates who told me their stories. The common theme was how so many of them never could have obtained a college degree if not for Liberty University Online. Here's some examples. Katherine McInnes is graduating summa cum laude today on her 53rd birthday. She started college in 1997, had to drop out because of financial pressures. She enrolled in Liberty University Online as a mother and a grandmother. Graduate Katherine Armstrong broke her back while taking college classes in 1998. Years later, she enrolled in Liberty University Online and finished her degree. Today, because of a miraculous surgical technique, she'll be able, able to, it will allow her to walk across the stage at graduation after being confined to a wheelchair for many years. Mark Rhodes, Jr. wrote to me, he said, I actually started attending Liberty in 1974 when it was called Lynchburg Baptist College and the dorms were in the old Stewart Arms Hotel, downtown Lynchburg, and out on Treasure Island, and a youth camp, an island in the middle of the James River. Classes were held at the old Thomas Road Baptist Church. He said, back then, Liberty was so small that my father would come and eat in the dorms, and in the hotel dining room with the students. But hearing that history just made me remember about how, where this football tower used to stand, there was once a dairy barn, and my uh, daughter, she turned 12 this, about two weeks ago. She had a slumber party over in the new Welcome Center and almost on the same spot where that dairy barn was. And I remembered that when I was 12, I had a slumber party, but I had to sleep in the barn. So we've, we've come a long way. But Mark also had to leave Liberty after his first year. 
and later returned to obtain his BS in 2010 and his MA in 2012, Liberty is proud of its family-friendly family atmosphere. Uh, resident student Katie Rebold told me at the senior picnic last week that three members of her immediate family are graduating from Liberty together today. Three sisters are also graduating together. Hannah Ellenberg, Katherine Comfort, and Emily Ellenberg are all graduating. The fourth sister, Sarah, is a freshman at Liberty. Then we have a miracle story. Patrick Andrews entered Liberty in 1994. That same year, he had a car accident that, was, that changed his life forever. He spent six weeks in a coma and was the victim of severe head trauma. After the accident, he, could only take, he was only capable of taking a limited number of credit hours each semester, but he never left here and he followed my father's oft-repeated admonition to never quit. Today, after nearly two decades of perseverance and determination, Patrick, now 40 years old, will receive his bachelor's degree. That's him with the orange cap, standing up in the front, third row. Congratulations, Patrick. And then there's Ron King, whose doctorate in ministry will be awarded posthumously today. Ron passed away on February 7th of this year. His dear wife, Sharon, is with us from Huntsville, Alabama today. Sharon, we are so sorry for your loss, but we want you to know that this is not just your husband's alma mater, but your extended family. God bless you. Becky and I are so proud of you, the class of 2012, and so thankful to God for your achievement. We have enjoyed getting to know many of you during your time here. We have attended sporting events, plays, and we've been there with you in convocation when life's lives were changed. Last Saturday, we hosted over 1,000 of you at our farm for the annual senior picnic. Becky stresses a little bit less each year about having over 1,000 students walk through her house even though pictures of our closets have been known to show up on Facebook. <laughs> this class is special to us because it's one of the first classes of students to enroll at Liberty after I became president suddenly when my father died five years ago. Mike Morrison and his sister Danielle are graduating today. Mike, like many of our Liberty Flames hockey team members, is from Canada. He's going to play pro hockey in New Zealand this summer after graduation. But Mike and a number of his fellow graduates made a scrapbook for our family of some of their favorite Liberty memories. It had letters, pictures. One graduate wrote, his name was Dusty Miller. He wrote in the scrapbook, after thanking us all for all that Liberty had meant to him, he wrote, I know you both will continue to impact students for years to come. Just don't forget your favorite ones that were here during the transitional years. Dusty is right, the, few the first few classes and my tenure as president always will have a special place in our hearts. But unlike last year, when our oldest son, Trey, graduated, we have no faculty members, I mean, no family members, sorry, among the graduates this year. But our youngest son, Wesley, is a freshman. He seems to be in no hurry to graduate, though. He's having too much fun. We're hopeful that he graduates before, from Liberty before my 12-year-old Caroline. But sorry, Wesley. But ever since my family's lives were turned upside down five years ago when I suddenly became chancellor, they've supported me and have adjusted well to the drastic changes in their lives. Becky, could you, Trey, Wesley, and Caroline please stand? And my mother is also here today. So I, th I think I saw her right over here. Mom, would you please stand? She's right here behind the stage. I hope, I hope none of you forget that tomorrow is Mother's I hope none of you forget that tomorrow is Mother's Day for your own good. But remember that no one succeeds in life alone. In all of life's great accomplishments, like the one we're celebrating today, there are parents, grandparents, spouses and children, other family members and friends who are always standing behind us. These are the people who've carried the slack when you've had to study late at night. They've prayed the prayers that have allowed you to persevere through difficult times, and they have encouraged you and applauded you. We want to recognize some of these people today. Would all the parents of our graduates please stand?
And last, we started a new tradition last year of recognizing the spouses of graduates at the request of graduate Don Redden. He wrote to tell us how his wife Pam had sacrificed to help him obtain a college degree. And we realized how often spouses are the unsung hero heroes behind the achievements of so many graduates. Would the spouses of all the graduates here today please stand? My spouse made me go to the hospital this week. I spent Thursday night in the hospital. I, I had some symptoms that were strange, and I, I knew I was okay, but she made me go anyway. And they, at one point, they caught me trying to sneak out by the nurse's station with an IV still in my arm. They made me go back, but I, uh, I finally convinced the doctors that I was right, and I'm doing great now. But thank you, Becky, for that. My father's vision for Liberty University was to found a world-class Christian university. He envisioned a fully accredited liberal arts university, not simply a Bible school, that would be for evangelical young people what Notre Dame is for Catholic young people and what Brigham Young is for Mormon young people. My sister, Jeannie Falwell Savas, graduated from Liberty in 1986, two years after I did. I went on to University of Virginia Law School. She attended school at the Medical College of Virginia, trying to keep up with her big brother, I think, and has worked there as a surgeon and a faculty member ever since. Just this week, she was named Chief of Surgery at Hunter Holmes McGuire VA Medical Center in Richmond, placing her among only a handful of women in the country to hold that leadership position. We, not bad for a little sister. But we reported this on the Liberty website, and I noticed that one of her quotes was a perfect illustration of Liberty's mission. She talked about how well Liberty prepared her for medical school. She then said that recently one of her students asked her why, knowing who her parents were, she didn't decide to go into the ministry herself. Her reply was, medicine is a ministry. You're ministering to the needs of sick people and dealing with people going through tough times. The vision for Liberty University has always been to train and send out a generation of men and women into culture as business persons, doctors, educators, lawyers, athletes, people in every vocation to enter every sphere of society and be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But in the 1970s, nobody was founding universities like Liberty. There were no financial markets where Liberty could go to obtain financing for a vision of this size and scope. So my, father's in, my father embarked on what would become an arduous journey. He, he even commented later that if he had known in his later years what he knew back then, he, he probably would not have founded a university. It would have scared him too much. But for 20, for 20 years, beginning right after I finished law school in 1987, I was in the trenches with my father as Liberty's chief legal counsel and later vice chancellor, trying to find the necessary financing to keep the dream of Liberty alive. My job included negotiating with creditors when Liberty was on the very brink of survival. There were many times where we would issue paychecks on Friday and spend all weekend trying to beg and borrow enough money to cover the checks so they'd clear the, clear the bank on Monday and Tuesday. But by God's grace, the school my father founded 41 years ago now enrolls over 90,000 students and will surpass 100,000 students in the next 12 months. Liberty is now the largest private nonprofit university in the country, Virginia's largest university and the world's largest Christian university. Today, we have 220 programs of study, a fully accredited school of law, and we'll be opening a medical school in the fall of 2014. Our campus is in the midst of a quarter of a billion dollar upgrade, including the Jerry Falwell Memorial Library now under construction, designed to become the heart of our campus and to underscore Liberty's historic commitment to academic excellence. Liberty has always been com committed to competing at the highest levels of intercollegiate athletics as well. You're seated in a football stadium that is a silent statement to that commitment. 19 of our 20 NCAA teams have competed at the highest Division I level since 1988. It is my privilege to formally announce today Liberty's, Liberty's intention to move our football program to the Football Bowl Subdivision, or FBS, level. This level was formerly called Division 1A. This is the top division that includes teams like Notre Dame, 
Southern California and the University of Alabama, teams that are eligible to go to bowl games. Liberty made the decision to move its football program to FBS after completing various feasibility studies over the last year. The move will be finalized when Liberty is invited to join an existing FBS conference. The vision for Liberty academics and athletics could never have been realized without the necessary financial resources. It took Harvard University 329 years between 1636 and 1965 to build financial reserves topping $1 billion. It is with great thankfulness to God that I'm also announcing today that in this calendar year, Liberty's, Liberty University's 41st year, Liberty will top $1 billion in net assets. My father announced publicly shortly before his death in 2007 that he was praying for a five-year, $1 billion miracle for Liberty. This was at, the, at a time when Liberty's net assets were less than one-tenth that amount. I have to admit that many of us thought it would take a generation or more to reach that goal. But over the last five years, God has taught us all that there's no limit to what he can do. Researchers told us this week that Liberty will be the youngest university in American history to reach $1 billion in net assets. So many universities on this continent abandoned their original Christian missions when they achieved ac academic and athletic prominence. And often the founding principles were compromised because of, a, of the financial needs and a tendency to bow to the pressure of donors who did not share the founding values of the institutions. We believe that God has blessed Liberty financially so that this pattern is not repeated here. I know this day is all about our graduates, but I always try to retell the miracle story of Liberty University at commencement because all of you will likely face the same sorts of struggles, trials, and tribulations in your own personal lives soon, just like, this, just like this institution faced during so much of our short history. And it was only through prayer, faith in God, divine intervention, and human perseverance that this university has come, become what it is today. We want you to remember that always as you go out from here.